everybody, Jody with the Ring Lord here. Welcome to our first video in the series for beginner weaves. This is going to be a video to teach you how to make Byzantine. Byzantine looks like this. Here's a couple more examples. It's a really beautiful weave. It's a great weave for beginners. Um, there are lots of color patterns you can use. Uh, different weaves in between the units, different sizes in between the units. It's a great all-around weave to learn. So we are going to go through these real quick just so you know what I made these out of. All of the rings are anodized aluminum. We have our shiny finish square wire rings. This is 18 gauge 3 16 in purple and dark rose. This is our matte finish. They're all saw cut rings, but these are matte, so they, don't, they are not shiny. This is in royal and red. These are 19 gauge 964th yellow rings and 19 gauge 316 in light purple. So here's an example of using two different ring sizes to make the Byzantine look a little bit different. And here's a couple other examples move these up. This one uses two ring sizes as well. Uh, this is 16 gauge quarter inch for the sea foam and 16 gauge 5 16 for the purple and the center rings or connecting rings are doubled. And here's another example, a little bit different. This is 18 gauge 5 30 seconds in bright silver. And so these are one whole Byzantine unit separated by doubled 16 gauge quarter inch rings in purple. So every other connector ring is doubled and bigger. So those are just a few ways you can make Byzantine. But let's get started on how to open and close jump rings. We'll move on to how we measure rings and how to make Byzantine one ring at a time versus using pre-closed rings. So let's talk a little bit about the supplies we're going to use to learn how to open and close jump rings. Firstly, let me talk about my pliers. These are, are our Tronex Mailer's Choice pliers. These have the longer jaw, so we sell two different ones. We have this long jaw and we also have one that is a shorter jaw. These are fantastic pliers for any experience level. Um, when you get into more uh, difficult weaves, you'll understand why these pliers are so good for mailing. Uh, they have a wide jaw, so it allows you to grip a good portion of the ring. They also have a very thin jaw at the end and a quite sharp corner, which allows you to get into tight spots without having to use other pliers. So I use one of these in each hand. I typically use the same type of pliers in each hand. That doesn't mean you have to. Lots and lots of people will use a bent nose plier and a wide nose plier together, uh, any kind of combination that you find comfortable and easy to use is how you should weave. I just happen to prefer wide nose pliers unless I'm using teeny tiny rings. Uh, then I will change to a Zuron plier which have very tiny jaws. Uh, we're also going to be using our matte finish saw cut anodized aluminum rings. These are in violet and sky. Saw cut rings means that we use a saw to cut them so that the edges of each ring are flat. So if you look closely at the ring and you there's a good picture on the website of the difference between um, saw cut and machine cut. I'll try to I will link it in the uh, comments. But these have two flat edges. So when you close these rings, you get a very nice closure. You don't feel any ridges if they're closed properly. Uh, with machine cut rings, 
which we no longer sell in anodized aluminum, but we do sell in other materials, you'll have one chisel edge and one flat edge. So let's learn how to properly close jump rings. So when I pick up a ring, I want to pick up as much of the ring as I can. It makes it more stable and you're not as apt to have slippage, which can actually lead to injury. Um, and these pliers are quite sharp. So I have definitely scratched myself. Um, so you want to make sure that you're getting as much of the ring as you can. And it is a really tiny movement. So here is what it looks like. Let's do that again. Sometimes you can hear the ring close and that is just a function of the two ends meeting each other or rubbing across each other. So what you're doing here is, like I said, a very tiny motion with your wrists and slight inward pressure. And once you start mailing, you'll kind of get an idea of what material and gauge needs what sort of inward pressure. So let me close this. And I don't know if you heard that click. That was the click I was talking about. Let's grab another one. So what you wanna do, once you've closed your ring, there's a couple things you can do. You can hold it up to the light to see if you have any light coming through between the two edges. If you do, you need to reclose your ring. You can also, so there's two planes. You want to run a finger across the side and this makes sure that your rings are closed the proper way this way. But you also want to run a finger over the top because you can, when you're closing rings, make one side higher than the other, which causes a ridge. It's called sixing because it's similar to the number six when you lay it down. So you want to make sure that when you're closing your rings, you're using equal pressure from both sides and you're not making one side higher than the other. So now let's move these violet out of the way and let's learn how to open jump rings. You never ever opening or closing want to pull or push your rings apart or together. That's not the proper way to close rings. It'll stress the ring, possibly causing them to break. So this is how your ring is going to come to you. You see it's slightly open. Again, Opening rings, just like closing rings, is a very small movement. You don't need to open your rings terribly wide because you want to make sure you're opening them just enough to get into the weave or into the rings that that ring needs to go through. So, for example, if I was going to use this ring to weave... I've opened it enough to get the rings onto my open ring. Before we move on to weaving, I also want to talk quickly about um, how we measure our rings. We measure 19 gauge, that's one millimeter wire and thicker in standard wire gauge and we measure 20 gauge, that's 0.8 millimeter wire, and thinner in American wire gauge. So I've pulled out three different rings in three different gauges. This ring is 14 gauge wire, so that's two millimeter wire, and we sell by the fractional inch for the internal diameter. We also do give uh, decimal inches and millimeters on our website so you can shop in any format you want. Um, so this is 14 gauge wire with 5 16 inner diameter. This is 16 gauge wire 1.6 millimeter in 1 quarter inch inner diameter and this one is 18 gauge 1.2 millimeter wire diameter with 3 16 inner diameter. 
I highly suggest that you understand the difference between standard wire gauge and American wire gauge and make sure that when you're shopping, if you have a tutorial that calls for 1.2 millimeter wire with a five millimeter internal diameter, shop in millimeters because our 18 gauge wire is 1.2. Other people sell their 16 gauge wire as 1.2 millimeters. So you, you really need to understand the difference between the two wire gauges because it does affect how you weave. So let's move on to learning how to weave Byzantine. I've brought in two colors that we're going to use to weave our Byzantine today. Both are the saw cut anodized aluminum in matte finish. They are round wire. This is titanium gray and this is our sky. I've also put an example here of our shiny anodized aluminum. Uh, this is our square wire, which is super shiny and very reflective. It's beautiful. Um, Byzantine loves square wire. You can see how gorgeous it is. And you can also see how nicely our matte finish rings can uh, be mixed with our shiny finish. So let me pop this out of the way. And we are going to start. So the way I'm going to teach you Byzantine at first is called one ring at a time or O-R-A-A-T. You may see it um, abbreviated that way on Facebook or the internet. It just means one ring at a time. So to start out, we are going to close four gray rings. So there's one. And you can see the little adjustments I'm doing. They're just little tiny wiggles to make sure that my ring is closed properly. And I also want you to notice that I have not put my pliers down. Even when picking up rings to close, I keep my pliers in my hand. The reason for that is that it's more efficient to weave with pliers in your hand, not putting the weave down, picking it up, picking your pliers up, putting them down. Um, so I highly recommend practicing having the weave in one hand and your pliers in the other and then picking up rings as you go. It just makes it a lot more efficient. So I've gone ahead and opened some gray rings and some sky rings so that we can get started weaving. <clears throat> so we're gonna take an open gray ring. We're gonna scoop up these four closed rings. So this is a good example of keeping your pliers in your hand. So I could have put my pliers down, got picked up the open ring with my fingers, put the rings on the ring, um, but instead I kept my pliers in my hand so that it's more efficient. So I've picked up those four rings. I'm just gonna close that open ring. So you can see all four rings on the one ring. Now I am gonna be putting this weave down a lot during this video because I wanna make sure that you can see it from all the angles you need to see it. Usually when I'm weaving, I do not put it down, but I just wanna let you know, even though I'm saying don't put it down, I'm gonna put it down so you can see what you need to see. Grab another open ring, and this one goes through the same four closed rings in the same path as the first one. And then close the ring. So you should have a little jumble of rings right now. Kind of looks like that. This next part is much easier to do than to describe. So don't get overwhelmed with this step. So I'm gonna pick this up and slide these two rings open okay then I'm going to take one of my sky rings and I'm just going to push the two rings in the center so those two center gray rings down because I'm looking for that hole right there 
So you have two gray rings here. You've got two gray rings here and two that I pushed down in the center. So I'm going to use the sky blue ring I have that's open and I'm going through the two rings that I pushed up or that created that hole. That's what it should look like from the side. And I'm going to close this ring. So we just put in our first connector ring and it should look like that. It sits between these two gray rings. So now I'm going to add another ring in the exact same path and close the ring. Okay, it should look like that. That's half a Byzantine unit. So with Byzantine, it's a series of two rings, two rings, two rings, and then you flip the rings back. And anytime you're adding rings, you're adding it to the rings that you just added. So we just added these two blue rings. Now I'm going to grab an open gray ring and go through the two end rings that I just added and close that ring. So this is your second set of rings in the 222 flip. So it looks like that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add a gray ring through those two end blue rings. Close it. Okay. Now we've got two sets of two rings. So now it's time to add one more set of two rings. So I'm going to take one of my open gray rings and go through these two gray rings I just added in the last step, close the ring, and I'm going to grab another gray ring and do the same thing. Close the ring. So this is what it should look like right now. So we have one set of rings, that's the blue ones. Two sets of rings, that's the gray ones. Three sets of rings, that's the second pair of gray ones. So in Byzantine, again, it's two, two, two flip. So we're gonna do the flip now. These two end rings are going to be flipped back toward the center rings. The center blue rings are called connector rings. Byzantine can have various numbers of connector rings and I happen to do, the most well-known is the two connector ring, but there are plenty of people out there doing one connector, three connectors, four connectors. The thing with that is you have to make sure that your aspect ratio, ring size, can accept as many connectors as you want without either being too tight or too floppy. So I don't know if I said the ring size we're using is 16 gauge, 730 seconds. Um, you could also use any, any ring that is, has an aspect ratio of about 3.5 for two connector Byzantine, 3.4, 3.5. So um, 18 gauge, 530 seconds, 16 gauge, 730 seconds, 14 gauge, quarter inch, and so on. We do actually have a web page on the website that is dedicated to Byzantine. If you go to projects and kits on the left side of the website and click on Byzantine, there are kits there that you can purchase. There's also a blue bar that spans the page. If you click that, you will get a drop down chart of all of the ring sizes that we have tested as well as the rings per inch. That is really helpful. It means you don't have to do the testing because we've done it for you. Uh, we do have uh, square wire ring sizes as well as round wire rings. So let's get on 
to doing the next step of our Byzantine. So we've just flipped these rings back and now we're going to put two connector rings in. So what we're going to do, let me pick my pliers up. We're going to turn this a quarter inch. And this is the same thing we did right at the beginning where we were trying to find, um, get that hole right there to put the rings in. So I separated these two rings and these kind of push up by themselves once you've started the weave. So we're going to grab a sky ring, which is our color for connector rings, and weave it into that hole and close the ring. So you can see that I actually, this is what a sixth ring looks like. See the left side is slightly higher than the right. That's what it looks like. You, it can be fixed or you could just take the ring out and put a new one in. Um, let's go ahead and add our next string so it's in the same path as the sky blue ring we just added. All right, and then close your ring. So if you want to, you could go back and you could make these rings, which are really connector rings, even though they're at the very beginning of the weave. If you wanted to keep the pattern, you could go back and change them out for the sky blue, or you could do a pattern where you have titanium gray connector blue connector. We could have made these titanium gray, then the next one's blue. There are so many different ways you can pattern colors in Byzantine. Um, really play with this weave and it's, it's a really fun weave to try to figure out where to put the colors. It can get a little confusing because you're flipping back rings. So you'll have to think about where your rings actually will have their end spot in the pattern. But once you figure that out, it's, it's really, it's a fun weave. So to continue the pattern, we've just put our first set of two. So now we have another set of two, which we just add gray to the next or to that last set of rings. Like so. Add another gray. Like so. All right, so now we've got two sets of rings. The first one was were the um, sky and now we've got the gray. So we're going to add another set of gray. And remember, we're we weaving one ring at a time, O-R-A-A-T right now. As soon as we're done with this unit, I'm going to show you how to ring with pre-closed ring or how to weave with pre-closed rings. All right, so we just put our third set of two rings so now it's time to flip so I have flipped them back turn a quarter turn so you can open those rings on the outside we're at a, a spot that takes connector rings so we're going to go through that space between the two rings you push the side and the two rings that sort of made that space. And we're going to put two sky rings. Okay, so that is our first set of two. And this is what it looks like. 16 gauge 732 is a really nice size for Byzantine. You could go up one size to our quarter inch um, without it getting too floppy to keep its shape. Once you go past an aspect ratio of about 4, 4.1, the weave will start getting floppy and it'll sort of sink into itself. 
Um, so the ideal aspect ratio is 3.4, 3.5, but you can go up a little bit if you like it a little bit um, softer. All right, so we need to add two more sets of two. Whoops, sorry, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's one. And then two and two more. There's one and two. Okay, we just did our second, I'm sorry, our third set of two. So now it's time to flip these back. All right, add connector rings. So we're going to turn it a quarter turn, open these rings and put this one through the space right there. Close the ring, do the same thing. Okay, so that's what it should look like right now. Let me straighten that out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use pre-closed rings. Sorry for the squeaks, it's my chair. Um, so you will need for this step two closed rings. So I'm gonna go ahead, sorry, I'm out of camera. Go ahead and close these two rings. Okay, so we have one set of two here. We just closed two rings. So that would be our second set. And, the, and now we need to add our third set. So we're gonna take an open gray ring, scoop up these closed rings, and put the open ring through this, the gray one. I'm sorry, the blue ones. Close the ring. So basically, you are making four in two, if you're familiar with that weave. That means that there's two rings that go through four rings. So as soon as we get the second ring put on, you'll see that there are four rings going through two or two rings going through four. So now we're gonna take an open gray ring, go through the, the uh, sky and go through the gray at the end as well. Close your ring. And you've just used two pre-closed rings to make your two, two, two. So now we're ready to flip. So flip those back, turn it a quarter turn. Grab your sky open ring, push these two apart, and now you're going to slip the sky ring into the space just like before. And double it because everything in Byzantine has either doubled or two rings per step. Like so. So if you want to add pre-closed rings, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. You've now seen how to weave both ways. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about real quick is how to add a clasp. I'm going to grab one of my examples. So unless you have a clasp that has a large loop at the end of it where you could put two rings in, you either would need to remove one of the rings or weave a single ring here at like I did here at the end. Um, or you would need to use a very large lobster that has a large loop at the end. So typically what I'll do is if I'm using a lobster, I will simply weave just one 
Let me just take this out. So it'll look like this. I would have just woven one ring into the end that I'm going to put the clasp on. And I would just put the, the lobster on that one ring. Um, typically the lobsters will clasp on to two rings. So the end is, is fine. If you find that it won't just take a ring off. Uh, if you want to use a thicker gauge ring at the end, you can do that. Um, for a square wire, depending on what gauge you're using and what lobsters you have available to you, you may end up doing what I did here and using a smaller ring gauge to get the lobster to fit. There are a lot of options for clasps, um, so you should be able to find something that works for you. Uh, if you guys have any questions about materials, what to use for a project, um, just general help with a project, we are happy to try to help you. We may not have all the answers, but if we have information or suggestions, we will certainly um, pass that along to you. The email address to use for that is projecthelp at theringlord.com. If you have order questions, product questions, uh, those are best um, sent over to our customer service. This um, video uh, channel will not be able to help you with order questions or product questions. So if you have questions of that nature, go ahead and send it to our customer service email orders at the ringlord.com. Uh, we will be doing more videos in our beginner series. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button um, and have a great day.